The systemic racism is a stain on our nation's soul. <clears throat> the knee on the neck of justice for black Americans. Profound fear and trauma. The pain, the exhaustion that black and brown Americans experience every single day. The murder of George Floyd launched a summer of protest we hadn't seen since the civil rights era in the 60s. Protests that unified people of every race and generation in peace and with purpose to say enough, enough, enough of the senseless killings. That was President Biden on Tuesday reacting to Derek Chauvin's guilty verdict as he and the vice president, instead of trying to unite us and lift us up on such an emotional day, told us how terrible and systemically racist this country is just minutes after the verdict came down. My next guest was a unique, has a unique perspective on race and criminal justice in America. Not only is Daniel Cameron Kentucky's first black attorney general, he's also the first Republican to hold the office in over 70 years, and we are honored this morning to have him with us. A.G. Daniel Cameron, thanks very much for being here. Thanks for having me, Maria. Do you believe this country is systemically racist? Well, no, I, I don't believe this country is systemically racist. What I believe is that this country has always tried from the very beginning to become a more perfect union. And certainly we've had our challenges throughout this nation's history, and there's no hiding from that. Uh, but when you hear comments like you heard from uh, President Biden and others uh, that throw fuel on the fire, uh, that explode the tensions that we have in this country, uh, that's not good for hoping to unify this country. And so in my part, I try to stay away from hyperbo hyperbolic terms. I try to make sure that I reflect love and, and, and Christ in my comments and try not to be caustic. Uh, so I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to continue to reach out to folks that have different views from me. Uh, of course, again, as I stated earlier, we have challenges in this country, uh, but the promise of a more perfect union is always one step away, always one step closer. And I think that together we can get there uh, if we put aside these hyperbolic terms, if we put aside uh, casting aspersions on one another, uh, and if we hold hands and walk together into our future. Yes, I, I agree. And, you know, what do you do in the face of all of this rhetoric then, uh, General? I mean, last weekend, Maxine Waters called on rioters to stay on the street, get in their faces, get more confrontational. Uh, if Chauvin was acquitted, uh, leader Kevin McCarthy tried to censor her, but the Democrats stopped it. They tabled it. Even Nancy Pelosi said that Waters has nothing to apologize for. So what are we left to think and to do in the face of this? Well, I think it's important that Republicans make sure that we show a strong vision and alternative for how this country can look. That's why I'm excited that uh, after President Biden tells us what he's going to do in terms of taxing and spending and what have you, that we're going to hear a very positive, a very forward-looking vision uh, from Senator Tim Scott. Uh, he's a personal friend of mine. I'm excited about what he's going to have to say about the vision of this country and how Republicans uh, can align with that vision for the working men and women of this country. I think that's incredibly important as we move forward. When I talk about the working men and women the, of this country, I'm talking about folks that look like me, that folks, Maria, that look like you, that folks uh, that are the rainbow, if you will, of this country. And so it's important for Republicans to make sure that we're tapping into that renewed spirit of reaching out and working with the working men and women of this country to make sure that they have good paying jobs, to make sure uh, that they're able to take care of the issues that are of the focus of the dinner table at night. And so I'm excited about what he has yeah. to say. Things like what Maxine Waters and, again, President Biden have said, uh, those things really hurt uh, the uh, unification of this country going forward. General Cameron, I want to ask you about the actions that you have taken against this administration, particularly as it re relates to taxes and your ability to cut taxes, as well as the cancellation of the XL pipeline. But first, let's talk voting rights. Here is Stacey Abrams with Senator John Cornyn. Watch this. So voter ID, sometimes it's racist, sometimes it's not racist. The intent always matters, sir, and that is the point of this conversation. That is the point of the Jim Crow narrative, that Jim Crow did not simply look at the activities, it looked at the intent, it looked at the behaviors, and it targeted behaviors that were 
disproportionately used by people of color. As you know, A.G. Cameron, the Democrats are making election integrity a civil rights issue. This week, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said that his state will sue if H.R. 1 is passed, probably win. What can you do in Kentucky, given you have a Democrat governor? Well, uh, Maria, I think it's sad and unfortunate that you hear those sorts of comments uh, from Ms. Abrams as it relates to the bill that was passed in Georgia. Georgia has done what any state, I think, has the responsibility and the important job of doing, which is secure their elections. For instance, here in Kentucky, our Secretary of State, Michael Adams, along with Republicans and Democrats, put together a uh, election law bill that uh, makes it easier to vote and harder to cheat. That's all that they're trying to do in Georgia. So again, when you have these caustic and hyperbolic terms that cast everything in racism, it does nothing uh, for uh, in continuing a fruitful and productive conversation about the big issues in our country. And when I see those sorts of things, it, it's disheartening. But all I can say is that in Kentucky, we've struck the right balance between allowing people to vote, as Senator Paul just so eloquently stated earlier, uh, but also making it harder to cheat at the same time. I think that's a model that needs to be taken across the country. I think Georgia tried to do that. It's unfortunate. Uh, that some folks have allowed this narrative to seek in as it relates to uh, racism in the Georgia law. Yes, it is. Let me get your take on the impact of all of these policies. You are leading a lawsuit to stop the administration from enforcing a mandate in the American Rescue Plan Act, which will prevent your state, prevent you and others, from cutting taxes. Tell me what your argument is. Well, our argument is quite simple in the sense that the federal government uh, and the Treasury Department in particular cannot tell a state what to do in terms of their tax and spend policies. But that's exactly what they've tried to do with this most recent uh, version of COVID relief spending. And so what I've done, along with my colleague Herb Slatery from Tennessee, is sued in federal court to say that Kentucky has a right uh, to determine its own tax and spend policies. You cannot take away COVID funding based on what we in intend to do with our, our tax and spend policies. For instance, we've got a project that we're working on in a minority district here in Kentucky that changes some of the tax policies for that minority district. If what uh, the Treasury Department and the Biden administration have done uh, is to take away money based on those tax and spend changes that we've made here in Kentucky, that will, that will hurt that minority district. It's unfair, uh, and we're going to stand up to those sorts of intrusions and that federal overreach into the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Well, I mean, it's taking away your ability to govern the way you want to govern, right? You've got a plan in place in terms of the taxes, and that removes it if you have that, that mandate. That's precisely right. Yes, ma'am, that's precisely yeah. right. It blows up the concept of federalism that, uh, and state sovereignty that I think all of us across this country appreciate and respect. And then there's the XL pipeline, sir. Tell me the impact on Kentucky, uh, given that Joe Biden came in and blew off law and just canceled the XL pipeline, killing jobs while doing so. Well, that's exactly right. Let me take a step back and say, as a Republican AG, and I know my Republican attorneys general across the country agree with this, we've got a responsibility to make sure that we defend the rule of law, that we're the last line of defense as it relates to the rule of law. And then, as we, I noted earlier, that we are there to stand up for the working men and women of this country. The Keystone Pipeline and what the president's administration has done there is completely disregard process as it relates to revoking that permit. So it's our job to stand up for the rule of law as it relates to that revoking of the permit. On the other side, the flip side, as it relates to the working men and women of this country, the rescinding of that uh, uh, pipeline permit has destroyed countless jobs in this country. And here in Kentucky, what has happened is that pipeline is obliterated. If it's, if it's taken away, it will increase transportation costs for agricultural commodities that we have here in Kentucky. Our farmers, our producers here cannot afford those increased transportation costs. So we're doing our part, again, to stand up for the rule of law, but also to stand up for the working men and women of this country, and in particular, uh, the farmers and producers that we have here in the Commonwealth, it's important that as Republican AGs, we stand up to any overreach by any administration, particularly this one, uh, that has made it a priority to change the climate agenda of, the, of this country, 
uh, and to uh, change the tax and spend policies of this country as well. So we're going to be doing our job over the next four years to stand up uh, to these sorts of activities by the Biden administration. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty extraordinary that we're spending so much money, $8 trillion thrown at this economy, and yet we're cutting defense spending. And now the Biden administration is, wants to use taxpayer dollars to promote critical race theory in schools. Can you fight back on that? Well, it is a, a, an awful notion uh, in terms of uh, critical race theory and, and the other things that are coming out as edicts. Uh, of this administration. And so we are going to continue to fight back on a whole host of challenges uh, that have been presented by this administration. But we're going to do it in a way, uh, like I said earlier, that is based on the law, that's not based on any sort of personal right. animus. Our responsibility okay. is to the Constitution and to uh, defending the rights of our working class uh, men and women here in Kentucky and across this country. AG, we cannot thank you enough, our audience, for your leadership. Thank you, sir. Kentucky Attorney thank General you, Daniel Cameron.